uh, wherever you are. Good to have each and every one of you. In the first part of our interview with our special guest, Dr. Abel Damina, we looked at so many different issues. We look at the, his genesis, how he started, and just to establish sort of like his credibility and just for you to know the man that has been on our on our YouTube and on our social media pages, uh, raising issues that are very vital. And we did raise issues in that first part. Uh, and he's back again for a second part. This is a three-part series. Well, we have Dr. Abel Davina still in the studio with us where we are really deep, digging deep and bringing out issues that I feel is really going to be a blessing to us. Uh, we had a discussion earlier on and said, look, hey, there's, there's, a, there's a shift. There's a revival coming on. Why? Because the truth is back in the marketplace. That's the right. truth is seeking for a place in our pulpits, right. in our churches. And God is seeking for people who would declare the truth. Thank you so much for joining me again. Thank you, Uncle Solomon. Yes. Again. <laughs> they, they, they called you a madman. Yeah. <laughs> I don't see a madman here, but I, I have to ask you, yes. you know, so many other leaders. Yes. I mean, respected leaders, leaders yes. that I respect. Yes. Have called you names. Yes. It seems like they're even afraid of mentioning your name. Yes. Some calls you the short man from Guyo. Yes, some call me rat. They said you're a rat. Yep. They say you're a madman. Yes, some call me thief. They call you a thief. <laughs> you know, some don't even know how to yeah. address you. Yeah. Is there a fear or is the truth now convicting so many of this? false prophets and prosperity gospel teachers because we have a lot of them yeah. across the continent. You know, um, uh, Uncle Solomon, thank you for that. You know, what the gospel has done, where I'm concerned, is as we began to bring in the principles of Bible interpretation mm. and very loud, it began to expose darkness. Mm. You know, in the book of Luke chapter 24, verse 25, where Jesus rose from the dead on the way to him house, he met two disciples, arguably Cleopas and the wife. They were discussing the event of the past three days. And then they were saying, and these are guys that have been with Jesus for like three years. Right. And they were saying, we thought he was going to be the one that would bring political emancipation. Mm. You know, a prophet mighty indeed. They even thought Jesus was just a prophet. You know, and then they were talking about, and to make matters worse today, the woman went to the tomb and they didn't find him, his body and all of that. And they were preaching Jesus to Jesus, but didn't know Jesus. So Jesus turned to them and he called them fools. Oh, fools, slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? That's to say, if you were reading, the word slow of heart is the word brados in the Greek. It means you are laid back. You are not engaging. You are not paying attention. And then he says that if you guys were paying attention, you would have known that my death was part of the reason why I came as a substitute for man's sins. Mm. And then verse 27 of Luke 24, and beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded. Now that word expounded is key because that's where you have the Greek word dimenua. It means to interpret symbols and signs to mm. cut across. So Jesus was the first person who interpreted the scriptures. He was the first person who interpreted Moses, the law, and the prophets. Now, what was the emphasis of his interpretation? The Bible says he expounded unto them in all the scriptures, mm. the things concerning himself. So we say the Bible is a Christocentric material that carries with it a Christocentric message, a Christ emphasis. In John 5, 39, Jesus said to the Jews, you search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life, mm. but they mm. are they mm. which testify of me. In John 1, 45, Philip find that Nathaniel and said to Nathaniel, we have found him of whom Moses in the law and the prophets did write, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, which mm. means there's a bias to Bible interpretation. Mm. That bias is the Christ. Mm. The message is Christ, which means Moses pointed to Christ. All the prophets pointed to Christ. So it is Christ emphasized. When we began to make that emphasis, mm. it began to expose falsehood. Mm. And when falsehood began to feel attacked, then, you know, when, when people who are given to falsehood right. don't know how to get back at you with a superior argument, mm. then they come at your person. Mm. Then they began to call me names, madman, you know, rat, and yep. all of that. Yep. All of that was to get at my person 
thinking they will distract me from the issues. Mm. And I refuse to be distracted right. from the issues because it's not personal. What I'm doing is not yes. personal. Yes. I'm not against anybody. Yeah. Some of these people are people I know one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah. Some of them we've had with times of interaction. We've done ministry together. Mm. So it's not about persons at all. It's about the issues mm. because the truth of the gospel is bigger than all of us. Yeah. The message is bigger than all of us. And if we don't preach the truth, we'll produce false converts. Mm. If we don't preach the truth, we'll produce false believers. At the end of the day, we'll deceive a lot of people and send them to hell. Mm. So the truth must be preached irrespective of whose ox is God. Mm. It happened to Jesus. They mm -hmm. called him names. Yeah. They called him a wine barber. Yeah. They called him a possessed with Beelzebub. Right. So when they call me those names, I just feel like, it's an honor to belong to <laughs> yeah. Jesus' WhatsApp group. Yeah. You know, for me, yeah. That's yeah. the way I see it. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's some of the things that you have said. I, I could understand why they would get to that uh, level. But, you know, for me, the, some of the benchmark of a leader is not to get personal. Right. And unfortunately, I've, I've had leaders get yeah. personal with yeah. you. Yeah. I, I cannot, because I disagree with you on an issue, right. I can never make it personal. Right. I can right. never attack your person. Truth. You know, and to be honest, it actually made me to question the character of some of the leaders. Very true. Because that's a, a reflection of the character of the person. True. He might have a 60,000 seater church. It doesn't, it doesn't really matter. That's right. You know, but now we're seeing the character of that person. Which is very important. You know, yep. It's very important. Very, very important. And I hope and pray that people would really pay attention to right. that. Right. That they will pay attention to some of the ways that some of these guys are trying to retaliate very true you know uh, what they say yeah you know because the character of a person is the person it is it's not how he prays or the miracle no, no, he's done no, no, or, no. or whatever no, no. And, and and we have to get there and some of the things that you've said which i think rattle a lot of people you've made statements like um the 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 god is not in heaven yeah you know yeah. uh even people who are not christians would make it to heaven yeah You've made uh, the, the, the the big body. one, obviously, the tithing yeah, issue yeah, uh, yeah. And, and all that. Yeah. Dwell on some of this. Okay. And because sometimes people would hear that, yeah. just a sound bite, sound bite and, and then they will conclude, the ah, no, that's yeah. the false uh, teaching, yeah. you know. But yeah. when you get to expatiate it, then yeah. people would understand better. You know, the truth of the matter is people need to understand that I don't teach single messages. When I take a, a topic, I do a series. Sometimes it runs to about 40 hours, 50 hours. Mm. I even have a teaching that's over 250 hours, my teaching on salvation. So bloggers who just cut sound bites, uh, they mislead some of these people. Right. And because some of these people are not studios. Yeah. So they just take it and that's all. They don't bother to investigate and interrogate and mm. say, okay, if he said this, what did he say before this? And what did he say after this? Mm -hmm. Let me get the full gist. Mm -hmm. Many people won't do yeah, that. Yeah. Okay, so they create a wrong impression. Right. And mislead people. But I always advise, go look for the mis... They are all on YouTube. They are not, you know... Now, when I said God is not in heaven, it was in 2016. I was preaching for uh, House on the Rock in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. And then in the course of preaching, I just said, God is not in heaven. Mm -hmm. And the whole crowd went like, what? <laughs> then I said, Genesis 1-1. And the whole crowd went, wow, and they, you know, and then, but because it was a meeting and the emphasis was not on heaven, yeah. I just passed by it. I didn't emphasize it. Mm -hmm. But in our church, I did a full teaching on it. Okay. The word heaven, there was the physical heavens. Okay, God is not in the sky. It's not in the physical heavens. God is in the heaven, which is what we call the euphoranius in the Greek. Euphoranius means the immaterial realm. Mm. So God is spirit. God can be in a physical location, like a physical person. His spirit is in the immaterial. And that's why the bodies that operate in the spirit realm are immortal bodies. Mm. That's why God is immortal. He's invisible. Mm. Okay? Mm. So, but there is a heavenly reality, which is the immaterial. And that is where the believer is, the immaterial realm. The Bible says Jesus has raised us up, weakened us, made us sit together with him in the heavenlies, in Christ, mm. the immaterial. And that's the reality of the believer. And there are a lot of teachings I've done on that. They're all on YouTube. You know, uh, In Christ Reality, Season 1, Season 2, Season 3, and Season 4 deals with all of that concept. Now, during the last conference I did, I said, God is not a Christian. And that caused a lot of ripple all over the world. Mm -hmm. How can you say God is not a Christian? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I said, you can't, you can't localize God in a religion. Yeah. God can't. was before Christianity. Exactly. Christianity just started in Antioch in the book of Acts, not too long ago. 
All right, so God can't be a Christian. He's always been before any religion ever operated. Mm -hmm. And that's why God cannot be boxed in a religion. And I went further to say, if a Muslim in a mosque believes the gospel, he has the message that Christ died, he was buried on the third day, he rose again, and believes in his heart, right in the mosque, he's born again. Mm. On the, in the shrine, a man that is a traditional worshiper, he has the message in the shrine, right. believes the message, he said, salvation happens within microseconds. God is not afraid of the mosque. He's not afraid of the shrine. He's not afraid of anywhere. The earth is the Lord's mm. and the fullness thereof. Mm. He owns the whole universe. Mm. And so that's the premise from where I was coming. And I can tell you the truth. A lot of people that we have judged and said, these people cannot make it to make heaven. heaven. Yeah. Are, you know, we're just being judgmental. You don't know what God is doing in people's hearts. Yeah. I yeah. said, like the thief on the cross, mm. everybody would have thought that guy is a notorious guy. He must have gone to hell. Mm. But they didn't know what happened within the last moments of his life when he said, when you go to paradise, remember me. And Jesus said, today you will be with me in paradise. Yeah. So that's the premise on which I made the statement on God doesn't live in heaven. And I'm talking about physical heaven, yeah. Yeah. you know, but God lives in the immaterial reality called heaven, which is what the Bible teaches as euphoranius, the immaterial, because God is invisible. Mm. God is immortal mm. and he can't live in the physical mm. because he's not a physical person. That's why in salvation, God became a man in the person of Christ because he needed a body to operate on the earth. He put on that body, put on humanity, came to the earth, died for man and made, you know, made a way for man and God to reunite. Okay, so in that incarnation, God became a human being and operated on the earth. But when Jesus rose from the dead, his body changed from mortality to immortality. Mm. That's why you don't see Jesus physically mm. because he lives in the immaterial realm. And the reality of it is that when you believe the gospel, he takes up residence in your heart. Mm. Yeah. One of the big issues Titan. Is the issue of tithing. Tithing, yes. So, like I was <laughs> now, saying in my story yes, in the previous part. Because you you are a beneficiary of it. Yes. In pre your uh, encounter. Yes. You know. And some people would even be saying, so how did you try to do anything to restitute? Did yes. you seek for apology? People have said um, that. And all that kind of thing. Yeah. But how did you get to that place? I mean, I I, I totally believe yeah. in your explanation. Yeah. You yeah. know, I believe I'm a I'm a big believer in giving. Yep. Yeah. You know, but tithing in itself, the way it's done, yeah. in the current church in Africa, yep. is totally yep. not biblical. Yep. But for you, because you <laughs> you basically trying to put Nigerian churches and the African churches out of business by saying that people should, you know, tithing is not biblical. Well, you, you know, the truth of the matter is when light comes, people should be ready to, <laughs> to put darkness out. I mean, right. why would you not, why would you not do what is dead already? <laughs> and the more they are trying to push this tithing, it's not working. Yes. <laughs> because people have seen people that. Are still questioning ah, it. What is this? You know. Now, the, the point is this. When I got into the Pentecostal charismatic and I started preaching, all we do about money was tithe then seed yeah. and then the prosperity thing came in and then we were taught that if you don't pay your tithe the virus will come before. and we believed it because I mean, and then we preached it and some people who tithed had some results so that authenticated it for that yeah. so we stayed yeah. in it yeah. but when I finally began to study the Bible in the light of Christ and I began to look into the scriptures old covenant new covenant and the, the, the ministry of today is the ministry of the new testament who has made us able ministers of the New Testament, mm. not of the later. Mm. For the later kill it, but the spirit give it life. Right. Mm. So if the, the ministry is the ministry of the New Testament, was there tithing in the book of Acts? Because New Testament started in the book of Acts. Yeah. There was no tithing. Nobody preached it. Not Paul, not Peter, not James, not John, not mm. even Jesus. Mm. Something about in Matthew 23, Jesus spoke about tithe. No, he was indicting the Pharisees. He said, you guys have let the weightier matters of the law. So tithing is of the law. Weightier matters of the law, like mercy, compassion. And you're emphasizing on the lighter matters of the law, which is tithe. He was rebuking them. He wasn't endorsing it. So which means tithing and all of that were matters of the law. Mm. Because Galatians chapter 4 verse 4, the Bible tells us that when the fullness of the time was come, 